Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Today we're going to be doing a volumetric efficiency test on a Ford F-150. Now for you guys that have been following along, I recently did a video on this truck where I replaced a faulty ignition coil and um, what we're doing now, or what I'm doing now, is I'm playing around with a new program that I, I purchased. Um, it is a VE calculator. I'll get you guys some more info on where I got it and, and how much later. Uh, for now, this is my first VE test on a vehicle. I don't use this test. I haven't in the past. Uh, what prompted me to start is when you have those vehicles like my Kia case study where I had a skewed mass airflow sensor and the uh, and it was a new sensor and the only way I was able to confirm it was a faulty math was by um, eliminating every single other cause of a lean condition that I knew injector balance and fuel pressure and all of that stuff and then we went back to the mass airflow sensor so there are times there's no question there are times a VE test volume volumetric efficiency test uh, is going to be necessary. So I'm going to start using one, or using it, and we'll see how this goes. Um, so some bonus material for you guys that maybe saw the F-150 repair video with the coil is uh, I'm still in the same location. This is two minutes later and I'm just test driving the car because I have the opportunity to. So nothing wrong with this car, we believe. Uh, there is maybe some slight concern uh, with damage to the catalytic converter, though I did a back pressure test already and it is perfectly fine. This is really just the follow-up of another video and I'm hoping that I can show this VE test. So let's go for a test drive and I'll show it to you. So here is the program uh, on, the, on my laptop. It's this icon right here. Let's close it out and reload it again drivability and emission calculation software I got this from AES wave it is um, the drivability guys is who designed this I believe the gentleman's name is Scott Shotton thank you Scott for this program uh, we only emailed each other briefly I had a few questions for him uh, Scott has some classes on this too and maybe uh, by the time you guys see this I can link one of Scott's classes where he teaches uh, this program but let me read to you guys what Scott told me again I'm new to this so I emailed him and I said I said anyway I've never really used the VE test before in any type of diagnosis but there have been a few times I've gotten my ass kicked by a skewed math and I think this can really help there is there anything you can suggest to help me with mastering your program other than a skewed math and restricted exhaust what else can we see that was my question and um, so he wrote back to me um, I do a whole class on how to use the software so I'll try to get info on that for you guys it can be used to find air metering issues fuel delivery issues restricted exhaust or restricted intakes it can also be used to take those four items off the table very quickly during a low power issue ie uh, ignition timing problems trans issues etc um, another thing that I've been messing with is turbocharged vehicles. My calculator is one of the few that allows for a barometric pressure input. With a little bit more math, it can be used to accurately measure VE on forced induction engines. So, uh, let's see what else. I can get you more information on how I test and dr uh, how I test drive and how I use the calculator. That would probably be better knowing before I do this video with you guys. But hey. Uh, we can learn together. Um, so yeah, um, thank you, Scott. Hopefully, I do okay in my very first VE test. Um, guys, take a look at the uh, laptop here and the volumetric efficiency calculation. We need we need the displacement of the engine put in in liters. Um, I guess we can change that. We need our RPM. We need our mass airflow, and then we need to know. Yep, it's gasoline and uh, the numbers to the right. So uh, what I don't know is you know, what are good numbers, what are bad numbers, but we'll see how this turns out. Then there's info here, atmospheric conditions we can put in our barrow uh, and degree temperature 
um, and so I'll see if I can get that info too. So it looks like I just need, for a test drive, I just need my RPM and my math, and um, apparently I don't need the calculated load value. I was thinking I did, I guess I don't. Let's go for a test drive, plug in these numbers. I assume that this is a, a wide open throttle test drive issue here, so we'll do a couple of wide open throttle num uh, runs and then we'll look at our numbers, okay guys? So this will be twofold for you guys that um, were with me on the on the repair on this truck this will just be a final confirmation of everything else being okay and looking at our trim numbers because this did have lean exhaust faults on bank one and bank two and we had a single cylinder misfire now you guys will be able to see these numbers live because I can do a screen overlay but I'm gonna have to stop and look at it you guys are probably seeing the graphs right now as I'm driving. Nobody behind me. I usually like to do a first gear wind out when I'm looking at my O2s and checking for fuel delivery. I'm wide open right now. It's a pretty nice first gear. Truck runs great, by the way. You guys that are with me on the repair part of this truck no symptoms of low power or anything like that. Let's get one more run around this bend here. Come to a stop and we'll wind out first gear. So you guys that are doing this type of testing, there's no reason to, to speed. All you need to do is get yourself a nice open area and first gear is all you need. I'm at wide open right now. certainly can't look at my camera and drive and look at data at the same time truck runs great by the way you know I, I should have pulled in maybe throttle angle but I can see both times where where I um, hit a max rpm looks like I hit a max rpm of 5013 so that's pretty cool uh, let's pull in snap on and these cursors still haven't fixed this I hate it hate it and for when I was told they have no plans of fixing it so here's what I'd like to do I'd like to pull my blue cursor over and show you the peaks of these rpms uh, snap one in their infinite wisdom uh, in the engineers when they rewrite software sometimes they take things out uh, that they shouldn't have and one of the things that they removed from the original versions of the Varus is the ability to use this cursor so for me to move this blue cursor over, I have to see, now I can move it, but I had to go all the way to the beginning of the data list. And what I'd like to do is place my little fancy blue cursor on different places in the waveform, right? So for example, maybe I want to measure looking at RPM in the middle, looking at this data pit right here. If I want to measure that, see this is so irritating. Can't do it on the initial screens I can, right? Um, I, make this cursor functional, please. And from what they say is, it's still functional. You can read what the numbers are. Yeah, you can. Like where the cursor is right now, all of the actual numbers showing on the screen. So by actual numbers, I'm talking about these guys right here. All of these numbers are reading where the blue cursor is. So you can just move it down, right? Well, that's great. But what if I want to read the peak of this RPM and I want to see the whole thing, right? So for me to do that, I can't easily. Okay, now it's just, it's not functional the way it should be. If I zoom in more, can I measure the peak of that? Well, 
am I at the peak? So here's their argument. Well, you don't need it to do that. You can still measure it. The numbers are live. I want to measure the exact peak. Sorry, I'm frustrated right now with snap on as far as this goes. Make the freaking cursor move like it's supposed to. That's not accurate. That's showing 4,000, so I'm looking right here, 4,670 RPM. Is that at the peak? I don't know. Am I at the peak? I'm not sure, because I can't tell. Am I just to the left of the peak? That might be the peak on that one. One of the two showed me 5,000 RPM. If I zoom out all the way, I can use my cursor like I'm supposed to. See, this is the way it should be on every screen. But... I can't really get the cursor where I want it exactly, right? It's not, it's so frustrating, so frustrating to me. So I measured, look guys, 5,013 is the peak RPM. That's 4,670 and that's as sensitive as I got. Let's see if I zoom in further. Nope, it's not that one. That's the second run. Let's go over to the first one. Hate this cursor. Hate it. You guys had it right on the initial software, and then you changed it. There it is. So I was trying to get there before. All right, I'm done. Sorry. I am at wide open throttle. I'm at my peak RPM. Here's here's what I've always done for the low power conditions. And you guys that have been following me know this test. Sorry, that bird is really noisy. Let's put this window up. Um, hopefully that's still okay for you guys. Um, what you guys know from following what I have been doing for years is I use the O2 wide open throttle test as a guide for fuel delivery and works great um, as you can see both upstream oxygen sensors are reading full rich the whole time I'm at wide open throttle and starting around frame 470 if you look there uh, that's my upstream O2 on bank one whoops and uh, here's my upstream O2 on bank two again frame 470 is uh, where I want your eyes to be and RPM is climbing so if you look at the RPM signal there RPMs climbing, O2s are rich, fuel delivery is good on this vehicle. If you have a low power condition and you have flatline rich O2 signals, then the next place I usually go is a restricted exhaust. And uh, all that, those tests are still very valid and maybe why I never use the VE test. Um, but we do have the option now of this calculator and I just want to see what, what it does. So we have our numbers we need. Let's, let's plug them in. I don't know that this um, application, um, well, listen, when you have an unfamiliar program, an unfamiliar tool, what you need to do is you need to test it on known good vehicles. So I'm calling this known good. The, re the exhaust is not restricted. I proved that in the repair video, uh, doing a back pressure test on the DPFE sensor. And um, uh, the truck runs great. So I'm going to call this known good. Let's see what the numbers are. And uh, I, just, I think this will be really useful for me at certain times. Uh, displacement of this engine. This is in liters. It's a 4.6. Uh, RPM. I think, Scott, I think I want to use the peak RPM, which is 5,013. And so we want to peak mass airflow grams per second number now. And that is, I'm using this max number right there. It's 178. I'm not even going to bother with the cursor because Snap-on's cursor suck on the scan tool. Uh, 178 grams per second. Temperature today. Temperature, humidity. See, I think we can do that. Let's go on the weather channel. Our altitude here above sea level, we're... We're around a thousand feet of elevation on average in the Pittsburgh area. Um, so let's, let's do that. Let's just put in a thousand feet above sea level. Uh, temperature right now, I think it's around, it's getting close to 80. 
I don't know that you'll always need that, but again, if I can find a class for you guys that Scott teaches on his program, I'll, I'll link it. Um, so it's 68 degrees right now. It feels hotter than that. And humidity. Humidity is 43% right now. That's why it feels like it's that's kind of muggy. Or dew point, yeah. Dew point's 45. Humidity is 43%. And it is, it says feels like 68. Now what's the actual temperature here, people? It's 68. All right, is that it? Is that all I need? Calculate. So I have a volumetric efficiency of 80%. Um, why did that come in to the green? Uh, be curious to hear from Scott as to why that is green. And I know that if I email Scott, what he'll probably end up doing is commenting in this video. So this will be a training video for all of us on using a VE test, 80%. I, uh, I, I guess I assumed that it would be higher than that. I think maybe green is good. Let's skew some numbers here for a second just to see what this would do. What if I put in 140 grams per second? Oh yeah, it went red, like that's bad. Okay, cool. So what was my number again? 178, 178 grams per second. Got a VE of 80%. Uh, what is my calculated load? My load value. Load value showed 86, 89% was my load percentage on the scan tool. So uh, yeah, that's as far as I got with this. Um, I'm anxious to hear your thoughts. What are the variables on the VE test? Uh, I know there are variables and um, it is one of the reasons I've never used it. Uh, but now I have a pretty sweet program here. Scott, I want to hear from you on this. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear, um, you know, why 80%? Uh, I, I just don't know my volumetric efficiency as well as I should. Chemistry and uh, physics and things like that, guys. I. I just never paid attention in high school and I should have and I'm, I'm regretting it now <laughs> I really am if I could go back in time and smack that young man in the in the head and say hey pay attention you're gonna need this stuff um, cool well that's it that's really all I can show you with this so far we're going to add to this of course again I think when you're doing new stuff you need to do known goods uh, maybe we follow this up with a VE test on my truck see what my truck shows be curious to see that too we can do my truck and then do my wife's car I can add it to this I'll do that we're gonna do that I'm gonna add to this video what my truck looks like what my wife's navigator looks like and we'll go from there okay people we are looking at my truck now um, Getting ready to do the test drive on the truck, just leaving Latour's auto. So, uh, yeah, we'll do the same thing. Let me go down to his shop. I'll turn around. We'll do the same wide open throttle first gear runs. <laughs> My truck's way cooler than that F 150. do it one more time after we get past the school here okay, looking behind me first gear part way through second I did on that last one all right here he goes Pull over and crunch some numbers. All right, let's make 
make sure we didn't lose our data. Pause that and just use our min max. I don't need to move the cursors around. So engine speed, airflow, got it. It is a 6.0, six liter. We hit 58, 58 is my peak RPM. So looking right there, engine speed 58, 58. And at a peak grams per second of, I don't know why there's two different data pids. One is uh, mass airflow grams per second. The other one is airflow grams per second. Uh, mass airflow showing 266, airflow showing 269. Um, we'll put the mass airflow one in, the lower one. We'll do them both. This is 266. Temperature, humidity is still the same. This is only about a half an hour later. It might be a little bit warmer, a degree or two maybe. Nope, it's warmer. It's 71 degrees now. And my barrow, I might be off a little bit with my barrow calculation here, guys. Um, humidity is now 39%. Oh, cool. It has a barrow pressure conversion chart. Nice. Uh... Okay, I'll get that number here in a minute. I didn't see that before. I uh, should have used that. Well, we'll see how close I was. My guess is a thousand feet. Um, let's calculate that. 79%. What if I put in the 269 number? If that makes a difference, I doubt it. Yeah, 80%. It's exactly what the Ford showed. 80% volumetric efficiency. Okay, this is my truck too. One more is going to be the Lincoln. Oh, uh, let's do one thing though, because I can. I can get my Barrow inches of mercury in here, and it's 28.9 uh, inches of mercury. 28.9 is ha. How about that for a guess? 28.9 is 1,000 feet above sea level. So we're good with the number I used. So my truck is showing an 80% uh, volumetric efficiency number. Um, cool. Next thing would be my wife's uh, Lincoln and I don't know, then maybe we'll post a video and start using this. All right, final one for our known good tests. This is a 2012 Lincoln Navigator with a 5.4. So let me get you on the scan tool. Let's go for a ride. As I'm thinking about what I said before as far as being at peak RPM, wide open throttle, that's absolutely what you want to be doing here. Um, you plug in those numbers, anything other than wide open throttle, it's not gonna be accurate. This is a wide open throttle red line measurement I always like the 54 I, I really think that this engine runs really well all right so our numbers it's 5.4 and our RPM 5243 grams per second 237 and let's get some temperature and humidity our barometric pressure is 28.9 so let's make sure our altitude is right 28.9 yeah we're at a thousand feet of elevation still That's good. Let's check the weather channel real quick. It is now 74 degrees with a 35% relative humidity. Okay. And calculate. Wow. 
This is showing an 88% volumetric efficiency. I wonder if that's the variable valve timing in this engine. I don't know if my six liter even has VVT or not. So I don't think that it does, but I could be wrong. I think I'd know my own vehicle. I know this one does. So an 88% volumetric efficiency on this Lincoln. I like it. So um, I'll be uh, anxious to see how this this goes in the field. I'm, I'm gonna start doing this a lot, taking recordings and uh, get a good baseline for this VE test. And uh, definitely anxious to hear your thoughts and comments on VE testing in this video. So uh, make sure you post them. And uh, would love to hear the variables too. Uh, maybe things that have gotten you in trouble in the past. And uh, again, advantages of using it. So for you guys that are looking for information on the program I'm using, you'll find the link in the description of this video, take you right to it. And uh, special thanks to Scott Shotton for writing this program, making it available for us. And uh, what else? Look me up on my website, guys, scannerdanner.com, where I have my um, ebook and paper book available for purchase and also have a forum where you guys can ask automotive questions and then of course don't forget about Scanner Danner Premium which is me bringing you right into my classroom at Rosedale Technical College and uh, you can view the playlist some of the playlist I haven't completed the playlist yet on my website but if you scroll over to the Scanner Danner Premium tab then open that up you'll get a real good idea of what I'm doing um, Again, I appreciate you guys being here with me today. Look forward to using this VE test with some more accuracy moving forward. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.